Oh, did you? <laughs> okay. Amen. Let's put our hands together. Amen. 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 God is good. All the time. And all the time. God, God is good. good. I want to welcome you here tonight. Pleasure Grove Western <clears throat> Church. Where the word of God makes you and I promise. Blessed are they that come hungry and thirsty after righteousness. They shall be filled. Filled. Amen. So, uh, you know, I notice whenever I say that, I, I guess I'm in the habit of, uh, when I introduce that, welcome to Pleasant Grove Western Church, where the Word of God makes you and I promise. Uh, I can't really speak for other churches. I can speak for our church. Amen. Amen. The Lord promises us because we know we're preaching the Word of God and we come worshiping Him in spirit and in truth. And as we worship Him, we ser serve Him, we search Him. And we come hungry and thirsty after him, then the scripture gives us that promise. Amen? Amen. Shall be filled. I don't know about you, but I need to be filled from time to time. Yes. Amen? Cup gets a little low sometimes. Yes. Sometimes the cup needs to get filled up. Amen. Mm -hmm. Then overflow. You like the overflow? Mm -hmm. Y'all like the overflow? I love yeah. the overflow. It's an overflow with him. Amen. It's a, I don't yeah. You don't hear it too much in the in the house of God where the preacher preaches about the overflow. Amen. Wanting to have more of him. Uh, have more of Jesus. There's a less of me and more of him. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. We want to go to the Lord in prayer. If you've got prayer requests, we want to bring those. I'll go ahead and lift up Brother Randall. They called and said his back was hurting and uh Irene says she's working too hard on his birthday. <laughs> they uh, put him down, so I don't know if they'll be watching us live tonight. Sometimes she's able to get us, so if they're watching, duty shame on you for working Randall so hard. But, uh, <laughs> now we want to lift him up in prayer. I know they, you guys know, this is the crowd. Amen. This is pretty much the same crowd on Sunday. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we. If we, if we sort of wanted to say percentage-wise coming in on Wednesday night that's here on Sunday, we're probably about the 90%. Mm -hmm. Not too many churches can say they got a 90% return rate on uh, Wednesday night. Amen. We got at least a 90%. Uh, <clears throat> might be higher than that if we get Dad here. Dad don't drive at night. And then, but so we, uh, we're here. So that's our prayer request. Lift them up. What's your prayer request for tonight? Pray yeah. for Sylvia, please, and my son. Keep him in your prayers. He needs it very bad right now. He's going through a rough time. Jimmy, it's a personal problem. Pray for my oldest boy and his family, too. Okay. Continue to pray for the junior line. I want to report that uh, they're going to run some more tests because they're trying to come tomorrow. And continue praying for Jacob and Danny uh, and Samantha and Eugene. Keep praying for my family in Texas. Salvation and Kenya. So I only lift up as a guy at work. I had a dream about him last night. I spoke to him today at work. He said everything's fine. But in the dream, you know, I needed to pray for him. So uh, some, when the Lord speaks to you in a dream, a person, you may be praying for a battle there uh, before they get to it. You know, it's, uh, so pay attention to your dreams. And, and we pray for people even if they're not, uh, in fact, each one of you lift up your hand. You know, just, so each one that participate lifting up your hand, we're going to lift you up in prayer. Uh, we all go through a spiritual battle, even though you don't see it. The Lord's fighting battles for us, and He's got His angels fighting battles for us that we can't even see uh, what's going on. And some of us uh, are experiencing things. We can feel things in our spirit. We feel them in our flesh. We feel them in circumstances. Some things you can't see. So this gentleman said, I asked him how he was doing. He said, all right, the doctor said he's doing good. I said, I dreamed about you, and this, was, this wasn't a physical thing that was bothering you. He said, all right. 
you don't look pondered and uh, so maybe it's just something the Lord need me to pray about or a battle that you might go through. <laughs> so or, or said, you pray for me, I know that there'll be battles that I go through. So that's the same thing I want you guys to keep me lifted up. As a pastor here also, you know, the, if the enemy can uh, get to the pastor, he can get to you. Amen? Uh, means that if he affects the word that you're able to receive, that affects you. Amen? Amen. Yeah, I'm going to ask Brother Greg if you'll take these petitions before the Lord, please, sir. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for another <clears throat> opportunity to just come to you in prayer, Lord. We thank you for the blessings that you blessed us with this week, the ones that we know about and the ones that we don't know about, Lord, is especially special to us. Lord, we know that you look after us. You're our provider and you're our safety, Lord. And we know that you look after us even when we don't see the troubles coming. Lord, we lift up Billy's son. And we lift up <clears throat> all those that are going through problems right now. A lot of us have different types of problems, Lord. Some are health. Some are physical, some are economic. Lord, there's a lot of a lot of troubles going on right now, Lord, and we know each one. Lord, just bring us through to the other side, get us through the storm, and allow us to be able to see the clear skies on the other side. Lord, we lift up the Glidewell family as they lost a family member this week or over the weekend to a tragic death. Um, luckily, she was a of elder age, so Lord, she had a good life. She had a good run. Lord, we know she'll be missed. And we lift up Sharon's buddies, Amy Kimry's dad who passed away last week as well. Lord, he had been battling for sickness for a while. Lord, we lift up Randall as his back problems, Lord. We know that back ailment and aches affect you all over, not just your back, but your whole body. And it'll play on your mind and and get you grumpy and aggravated and easily in anger. Lord, we just hope that you just look after him, give him extra special blessing tonight um, to take away the pain, Lord, and allow him to have a, a blessed day tomorrow. Lord, we lift up Doris as all the things that she's been dealing with, Lord, and we know that you know each one. We just lift her up, and Eugene and Nelly, and Lord, lift up Patsy, and lift up Danny, Samantha and Savannah and all of our teenage kids that we have here, Lord. And we just lift those folks up and just give them an extra special blessing this week. Lord, allow us to be able to take something away from this message tonight. And we lift up the pastor and his family. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God is a wonderful God who hears and answers the prayer. The scripture says, Well, two will agree touching any one thing, it shall be done. Amen. Where two or three are gathered together in his name, he's in the midst. Amen. Uh, so we uh as we're here, it's more than more than two of us, and we could agree in prayer. So the Bible says we can expect the answers to these prayers. Amen. Amen. Now we all lift up the Lord and we lift up these prayers in, in the will of God. Amen. And Many that we didn't, uh, that's on our heart that we didn't even mention, uh, that's part of the church that, but whoever's under our umbrella uh, of this ministry and under your prayer closet that you have, we cover them in this prayer, amen? Mm -hmm. So if you'll open up your Bibles tonight to the book of Genesis chapter 22, I want to uh, backstep a little bit, go back to the names of God, amen, and, and sort of uh, carry on this one. And but God is, is such an awesome God, and God is a giving God. Amen. Do you know that God is a giving God? Yes. Do you feel good when you're able to give something? <laughs> Amen. You know, as a, as a as a parent, you know, oftentimes you you like to give your children and you give to others, and you're not really looking for, for somebody to give you something. My dad's really like that. Don't give me anything, you know. As uh, and and I and I'm like that. As I, you know, as you know. But my wife, she's a giver, so she always likes to get me something, either birthday, or whatever it is. She likes likes to give, but but it makes you feel good. It makes you feel good, uh, even if it's just something, a little something, 
but you know, that's really a characteristic of God because God is a giving God. In fact, the Bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive. Than to receive. And so, uh, so you're blessed when you're able to give. Mm -hmm. Amen. And especially when you're able to bless like we was able to bless this family uh, Sunday. And, and uh, then we uh, are bless each other in, through prayer. We're giving, giving our time to the Lord. But God is a giving God. And so tonight it's really... Folks, a little bit, and then we're going to get to the name. Brother Greg mentioned his name in, in his prayer that God is the provider. He is Jehovah Jireh, mm -hmm. the Lord who will provide. Amen? Mm -hmm. He will provide whatever you stand in need of in your life. So in the book of Exodus, chapter 22, is where we first uh, see this uh, documented. And I want to, I'm going to, yeah, Genesis chapter 22, and I'm going to, get you up to the story and then I'm going to begin reading at verse 8 all right so all this Abraham has had how many children yep. to this one. <laughs> now now he started off him and Sarah they had they had how many children together to start off with none. they had none that's right that's right they had none <laughs> And then what was his first child? Who was she with? Who was his first child with? Uh, Abraham. Abraham's first child. Ishmael. Ishmael. Yeah. Right? But see, we then after Ishmael, he had who? Egyptian woman. She was no, uh, no. Yeah, he had Isaac. Isaac. Isaac with Sarah, right? right. So we're with we're with Isaac now. That's who we're getting ready to talk about. So God tells Abraham, He says, Take your son, your only son. Isaac. So that makes you start wondering because you've already read up to this point and we've already remembered by our testimonies here tonight that he had Ishmael also. Why, why would he say take your only son? What, what would God... Do you, now this could be an opinionated question. It's not really a right or wrong, but I sort of want a little bit of participation to help get me rolling tonight. Amen? Uh, so, Brother Greg, what, what would you say why he said your only son? Maybe God realized that Hagar took Ishmael and left. She was totally out of picture. That's because she was totally out of picture. See, she was a he, he was Ishmael was the son of an Egyptian woman. So from an Egyptian woman, not a Jewish woman, God, right? That couldn't be part of the. Of, uh, the covenant, but it, it might not be a part of the covenant, but it was his son. Yeah, it was but his see, son. But see, but see you not. get a combination of things. Anybody else got a? It wasn't the son that he was talking about, though. Well, that was his son, was him and Sarah. And it's between him and Sarah. So yeah, you I you can sit here, and, but that's what it is all about. Reading God's word, and you let your mind begin to experiment, begin mm -hmm. to dig deeper, and God is is pleased when you let your mind wander. Uh, Lord, what is this? What is this talking about? Is it because uh, Hagar had left? Is it because whenever God made he, uh, Abraham and Sarah promise that they're going to have a child, mm -hmm. you know? And then was he out of God's will whenever he went into Hagar because Sarah sort of give up, said, "Here, take my handmaid and have a child with her," you know? And the, so, could it have been this? Could it have been because Ishmael was a an Egyptian and and not Jewish the reason that or Hebrew is that why but so it lets your mind begin to wonder so so anyway he says your only son we know he's talking about Isaac right. in this part of the scripture and so he says take your only son Isaac and I want you to sacrifice him so let me clarify this before we dig deep into this because <clears throat> anybody that may watch on social media or in this church God does not expect you to do any more sacrificing. There's no more sacrificing that you have to do. Jesus took care of all those sacrifices. He died once for all. Amen? So there's no more sacrifices, no more blood has to be shed in order to uh, please God. Amen? The sacrificing we do now may be sacrificing our time. You know, and I really wouldn't call that sacrifice because God gives you that time. So we get to the part of there's no have to there's no more sacrifices that has to be made. 
So God does not expect us, and he's not going to tell us to sacrifice your children in today's time. Amen? God will never tell you, he will never tell me, Jeff, go offer Jeffrey up as a sacrifice. Amen? Would the devil tell a parent that? Probably. <laughs> Probably, right? Sure. Well, one thing we know in our culture is against the law. But at the same time, we look at when we get to abortion, that's pretty much almost the same thing, isn't it? When we get to that. So we're, this isn't about abortion tonight. This is getting back on the subject of, of dealing with what God is getting ready to do. So he says, take your only son Isaac on you offer him as a sacrifice. What did Abraham do? Did what God told him to do. He was obedient. He said, not, not Isaac. You know, not my son that you promised me, but what Let's read this, and, and we're going to stick with the Old Testament instead of flipping over to Hebrews because it explains it a little bit deeper in Hebrews. But let me start at verse 8 here in chapter 22. And Abraham said, My son, God, let me back up. My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. Now, I want to bring you up to this part because I said, You know, I see the fire, I see the wood, but where's the sacrifice? <laughs> You know, now I can imagine, I know people, I didn't read it right here, but some people say Isaac was probably around 12 or something uh, when you hear people studying this out. Yeah. So, so I visualize this because, you know, our children are around this age. And, and I can visualize, I was thinking, Jeffrey said, you know, Dad, I see the fire, I see the wood, where's the sacrifice? But Isaac had faith in his dad. He had faith in Abraham because evidently Abraham had spent some time talking with God and he was a holy man. He was a righteous man. He was a faithful man. So his child understood that whatever dad's deciding, it must be what God wants to do. He didn't question his dad, right? As far as after his dad explained this, God's going to provide. Okay, that's fine with him. We don't have that in today's time, is it? Amen. Now, I don't want you to answer this. But y'all's children are a little bit uh, self-reported. Your other children are older. And so when the children ask something and you give an answer that they don't really want to hear, do they stop at that? <laughs> no, normally they don't. They're going to keep asking or asking <laughs> until they get to something that they're satisfied with or, or that would really give them a more clear and definite answer. But in this time, we see that Isaac was following after God, or after his dad, Abraham. So Abraham said, God's going to provide himself a sacrifice. In verse 9, And they came to the place which God had told them of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid wood on it in the order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And I thought about this as I was reading it, is that whenever I was getting ready to get a spanking from my mom, I wasn't going to stand still. I was dancing, trying to get away, but I couldn't get away from that grip. You know, especially when she starts swinging. Now, Isaac wasn't getting a whooping, but he's sitting here, okay, why are you tying me up, Dad? Yeah. You know, you know, why are you tying me up? So, so I was thinking, it, it, it reminded me of the story where Jesus was like a sheep that was brought to slaughter. You know, he didn't, he didn't try to resist. He just went on. And so this sort of what this, reminding me of as I'm studying this out for today but it says and he laid him on the altar upon the wood and Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son now I, you got to visualize some of these things mm -hmm. and then to, to paint a picture that here Isaac's laid out on the altar and here you got Abraham with his with his knife getting ready to slay him now, the Bible didn't say he was blindfolded. It just said he was bound. So I'm, I'd imagine those little eyes are probably <laughs> looking up like, Dad, what, what are you getting ready to do here? You know. But then an angel of the Lord. Yeah? It said, The angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. Now, this is one very important time that it's great you can hear God. 
So what if his relationship with God wasn't as, as clear and he didn't hear God? He was so frustrated and, and disgruntled because things wasn't going the way he expected. So he tuned out what God was going to say. Okay, I'm going to go kill my son. That's what God wants. That's what God told me to do last. The last time I heard God, he told me to go offer him up as a sacrifice and where to do it. In this particular time, I myself would want to say, Lord, if anything else, I might want to make sure I'm hearing you correctly. <clears throat> and that, that was a serious time. Could you imagine our life, the different things that we could avoid if we was more sensitive in our hearing and hearing of God? Hearing what God was giving us direction to do. So the way we tune in that hearing is to re be faithful, to read the word of God, to hear the word of God, and to have that relationship with him. So he says, don't slay your son. Amen. So let's get on with this. Because God is a giving God. And this is sort of what this is building up to. For this part it says, uh, and he said, lay not thy hand upon thy lad, neither do thou anything up unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, from me. Now, when you go in the book of Hebrews and you read this story, uh, if God's promise was to come through the lineage of Isaac, to be the father of many nations. <clears throat> now, I've studied this, and, and it's, uh, it's preached this, that Abraham's faith was if I, if I slay him, evidently God's going to raise him back up because he gave me a promise that he's gonna, I'm going to be the father of many nations and it's going to come through Isaac. Amen? So, so evidently, he's like, well, God, you said you're going to do this, so if you're telling me to slay my son and I'm obedient, evidently you're going to turn right around and raise him up. Amen? So, Abraham being a faithful man, you have to imagine, okay, could this be what he's thinking about at this time? So it says, And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him there's a ram caught in the thicket. There's a big buck back there, right? So, there's a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh. And it is said to this day, in mount of the Lord, uh, it shall be seen. Amen. That Jehovah Jireh, that the Lord will provide. The Lord provided this sacrifice uh, after Abraham was tested on his faith. Was Abraham was Abraham willing to give his son? He was willing to do that. You believe Abraham loved his son? Do you believe Abraham told Sarah what was getting ready to go down? No. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see that going over well, couldn't you? How about you, Brother Greg? I can see me telling my wife, you know, we've been trying for Jeffrey for, for 14 years, not, not all the years that they had. <laughs> 14 years and then I feel like God wants me to offer Jeffrey on the altar. Amen. Y'all would probably get a call that Irene was in jail. <laughs> and, and, I, and I was either in the hospital or at the morgue. Right? But Jeffrey would be fine. So I doubt that Sarah knew anything about this. And uh, because God was talking at this culture, God was talking to the male. God was talking to Abraham. He had made the, he had talked to, and he talked to Sarah too, I'm going to give you a son. But I just have to let my mind imagine a little bit that there's something different about a mother's love. Here she done carried uh, Isaac for nine months in her in her belly, and and you know it's, it's just something a man can't imagine that kind of love. He didn't feel all that going on. Amen. Chicken and yeah. but, but I mean I know like when Jeffrey Irene was pregnant with Jeffrey, I'm sitting there, I'm trying to. And I'd talk to him, I'd sing to him, pray with him, saying, Jesus loves me, this, I, you know, and, and all these things. And uh, then every day and then I'd feel him kick. But that wasn't inside of me. I had to feel it from the outside in. Irene 
Now, you know, the mothers, you can feel the baby from the inside out, right? So I doubt that Sarah knew uh, about this, but just, just to let our minds wonder, do you believe that she would have agreed with Abraham to go ahead and do it? I believe she'd have hesitated a little bit. <laughs> I believe she'd have hesitated. I, <laughs> I believe they'd have had to talk it out. Yeah. <laughs> and Abraham would have had to convince her, says, look, God promised, and if God promised, then he'll raise him up if, if, if he takes, if we have to slay him. Because he made us a promise, and he gave him to us, but evidently that's what God wants to prove something else. So I believe it had a heart-to-heart uh, -heart talk in this situation. Amen. So this is where it comes up to Jehovah Jireh uh, that God will provide. Then, and our, our Lord will provide. Here we've got him providing a sacrifice in the place of Isaac. We get over to the New Testament to where God provided the ultimate sacrifice, the Lamb of God. That was Jesus Christ. That's right. And that's the sacrifice that once he was sacrificed, that was it was finished. There had to, there didn't have to be any more sacrifices. I often wonder uh, because I've not studied it out myself how the Jewish custom, if the Jewish custom was offering all these sacrifices during these biblical days, and if they don't recognize Jesus as the supreme sacrifice, then where are all the sacrificing things going on now for the ones that? If they still carry on that tradition, because there's many. I work for a Jewish. The Jewish. There's a Jewish owner of the company I work for. So when it comes to Jewish holidays, uh, they follow every one of them. So this year, not many Jewish holidays is in my work schedule. But when it's in my work schedule, we get that day off. By Friday, everybody has to, Friday evening at sundown. Everybody has to be out of the factory. No work going on. No work going on on Sunday or Saturday. Now, we can come to work on Sunday, but we can't work on Saturday. We can't work on these other Jewish holidays. And some of these Jewish holidays was you can come to work, but you can't make money. You can't make production. So they would do inventory or clean up, but you can't actually produce. You can't run the equipment to actually package and produce finances. But I've not heard of him. Now, I've met him, and when he comes, he comes to the work, he's, he's got a beard, and he, he wears a, a, like a belt, uh, a rope belt mm -hmm. type thing, and uh, he wears his, the, the, the little beanie thing. And, uh, but there's several in his family that are the upper management that none of them work at this factory here, but they come from New Jersey, and they come down. Amen? So when we, we see this, is that I, I wonder that where's everybody's customs now? But Jesus says he come once for all. The Bible says Jesus come once, he sacrificed once for all. There didn't have to be any more sacrifices for our sin. And so when we, we look at this, it's a couple of things I want to point out in Book of Psalms, chapter 37. This is some of this is stuff I've read to you before. Book of Psalm. Let me turn over there. Book of Psalms, chapter 37. We've read this before, but not really looked at it at this particular angle, if you'll let me like say it like that. 34 and verse 4. But I like these the three and five so much I want to add those. Trust in the Lord and do good, so shall I dwell in the land. And verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Commit thy way unto him, excuse me, commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And this is this is pulled into God being a giving God, a providing God. And, and so what I want you to start doing when you start reading the Word of God, I want your mind to begin to expand and see how God is a giving God in the Scripture that you're reading. Because we see something special that, that throughout all this, not only God is a giving God, but we see that the kingdom of God, 
That is expressed through the Word of God. But you, your mind has to begin to, to uh, expand and say, okay, when I read the Word of God, I'm going to know about kingdom. When I read the Word of God, I'm going to know about love. When I read the Word of God, I'm going to think about the fruits of the Spirit. When I read about God, I'm going to think about the names of God that we've been studying here on Wednesday night. So when we read about God in this, this is no exception that I want you to see the giving part of God. Because when we think of this, we overlook that word that he will give you the desires of your heart. We think about, okay, what's my desires? Amen. Because God is a, a giving God. It means he wants, to, he wants to give you. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to be pleased. But God is also a taking God. Mm -hmm. Amen. I believe it says something like this. The Lord gives, the Lord takes. Blessed be the name of the Lord. <laughs> Did Job talk about that? Yeah. Hmm? So God, God... What God gives, God can turn around just as easy and take it away. I may have shared this story with you whenever I was, a, I don't know, I was probably 11 or 12. My dad, when he would go visit with him, he would always give me a dollar or two dollars when it's on Sunday when it's time to bring me home. You know, back then a dollar or two dollars was a lot. You know, it seemed like it. And uh, in this particular day, he gave it to me and I didn't say anything. Dad was one that raised me up uh, and taught me to say thank you when somebody gives you something. I don't know where my mind was at, so I didn't say anything. He, a little time passed. He says, where's that dollar I gave you? He says, right here. He says, give back to me. So I give back to him. He waited a little bit. He gave it back to me and uh, put it in my pocket. Little time he said, Where's that dollar? I give it back to him. I'm, now I'm starting to laugh. I, I, he, it's funny to me. <laughs> After about three times, he said, When you learn to say thank you, I'll let you keep it. After that, every time dad gave me something, I'd sure to get say thank you. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but we look at this and we, we overlook all the gifts that God gives us, and, and sometimes we take it for granted. <clears throat> I think about this, and we didn't teach Jeffrey this. Jeffrey just started doing it. He gets up from the supper table, and he looks at his mom, and he says, thank you. That's sweet. And I think, we didn't, we didn't tell him, you know, we didn't say, hey, B, you got to tell your mom and dad thank you, when you for the food we're putting on the table. Yeah. You know? And, and I just want you to, be, but I want to say something that says so looks like so small that we didn't really didn't expect it. Can you imagine God on the big level that He is? That we're thankful for the air that we breathe. We're thankful for having lights in the church, having the air conditioning. We're thankful to have a place to worship. We're thankful for being able to breathe in and out. You know, we're thankful. Uh, we got to be careful of thinking you may not have the mansion that that the Joneses have or the Smiths have. And then you may not have the big mansion, but being thankful for what you do have, you know, look at they don't have the you know perhaps some kids have to share bedrooms. It's Hispanic community that happens a lot whenever they're growing up. You know? I'd imagine Savano uh their parents had like what 20 children 20 children but of course by the time you had that many you got some adults and <laughs> adults in there right <laughs> but but during that time you know you've got some that are uh now savannah was my brother-in-law that's her sister's husband so so they uh so you have to imagine in, in the olden times when the families were known to be so big a lot of people shared rooms you know? me and my brother we had bunk beds right so uh, you, you look at some of these, but being thankful even for just having what little you do have and realizing that God didn't have to give you what he did give you. All right, I want to get on with this. So he would, uh, he would give you your heart's desire. Uh, and I, the way I preach this normally is that as you serve him, as you commit your way to him, God creates within you a heart to desire him. He'll give you your heart's desire. But the Bible says, whatever you ask in the name of the Lord, he's going to answer. He's going to give it to you. 
whatever, ask anything in my name, and I'll do it. So let's break it down a little bit. God is a giver. We know he's a giver of a sacrifice. He's a giver of life. He's a giver of the kingdom of God, which is righteousness, peace, and joy, which is characteristics of the kingdom. Happiness, right? He's the giver of health. Right? He, he's the giver of, of finances. You need some money. You know, he, he's the giver of uh, assurance. He's the giver of faith. Now, in all these things, there's some type of expectation. Now, it comes around to about grace. Grace is given by God, but do we have to do anything for it? <clears throat> Technically, do we have to do anything for it? No. You have to believe, though, right? You gotta believe. You gotta believe. That's sort of a trick question because faith is, the Bible says that <clears throat> faith is a gift of God. It's a, that uh, grace is a gift of God. And we're, when we're saved, we're saved by grace. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Not because I've worked and I earned it. We can't earn our way into heaven, but it's a gift of God. But what does God expect? He expects us to use it, right? He expects us to use our faith and use what he's given us. Now the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. So grace is not wages. But death is wages. Can you understand that? Because the, the wages of sin, that's being what you've earned, what you deserve, is, is death. The wages of sin. Mm -hmm. when, we go, when we go to work, when it's paycheck time, we expect to have the paycheck. Right? When I got direct deposit. You get direct deposit? So I expect that direct deposit. It, our paydays on Fridays... But my bank, it gets put in there on Thursday. So on this Thursday, I expect to see that check. But if it's not there till Friday, I can't complain. <laughs> right? But, I, but I'm looking on Thursday because that's the, what do you call it? That's the, the history of it. That's what's been happening is I get it on Thursday. So I'm expecting that. I'm, I'm expecting that, that particular pay. But I, I want to get around to is this. Is that by the wages of sin is death. We know that we deserve that. And that paycheck we deserve. And some of that paycheck we might have goofed off some. But we want the full amount, don't we? I do, you know. Mm -hmm. that, you probably wouldn't think this that I talk at work. I mean, and it's not always about work. Sometimes about the Lord. Sometimes about hunting. Sometimes, you know. What's going on in the world? Sometimes I'm listening to a lot more of that than I'm talking because a lot of these guys are conspiracy type <laughs> type guys. So, but when God gets to the part of grace, it wasn't something that we, we could earn. It wasn't something that we could do for salvation, but it was a gift. In fact, he said that God gave his only begotten son that whosoever would do what? Believe. So they had to believe. Believe in him, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. In fact, it goes over to Romans chapter 5, verse 8. For God commended his love toward us, even though we were yet sinners, Christ yeah. died for us. He gave himself. Jesus said it like this. He says, I, I'm able to take it up, and I'm able to lay it down. Mm -hmm. Talking about his life. Amen? He'll give it, but he can take it back up. Why? Because he's in the deity of God. You and I, we can't really wrap up. Why would Jesus say all this and seem disappointed when he was sweating great drop like great drops of blood whenever he was praying before he was crucified? Amen. And he said, ne then he gets to the point, nevertheless, Lord, he said, he's praying this is, if it be thy will, take this cup away from me. You know, why has it got to be like this? He knew what it was going to be. He was with, he was in the Godhead whenever they made the plan. We don't know what God is such an awesome God. 
And you take God's word and we look at it literally, but we look at how these apostles were never, and these disciples, whenever they wrote the word of God, they didn't write it as they was doing, as things was taking place. But we know they were inspired God to write the story. Because they weren't right there with Jesus. So evidently the Holy Spirit had to tell them what was happening when Jesus was praying. So, but God gives. Jesus gives. So this is where we get into. In the book of Luke chapter 12, verse 31 and 32. Let's turn over there real quick. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Luke chapter 12. What I'm trying to dig in tonight is for you to see that God is a providing God. <coughs> a provider is a giver. Amen? So, if, if the husband, if the wife don't work and the husband is working, he's providing for the family. Mm -hmm. The finances. But just because the wife isn't working doesn't mean she's not providing Example, Irene, she, she provided food on the table. She provided a clean house. She provided an environment. She provides Jeffrey away to school. She provides taking care. All I have to do is just go bring home the bacon. Right? Y'all remember the old commercial? <laughs> Man brings home the bacon and she fries it up in the pan. Never let you forget you a man, right? <laughs> <laughs> Something, like that. <laughs> Something like that. But but when both women, both husband and wife are working, then both of them are providing. But that, the, the family head is providing in the family that God has designed. In our culture, we recognize that the women are just as special as the men. They're just as important in the household as the man. But we're talking about something about being a provider. So God being a provider, he, it, it represents that how, how he's, you expect uh, the father in most of our culture is the provider. You know, let's, let's narrow it down like this in humanity in our culture. We know the parents are going to provide. The children should say, well, it's about time for school, so I know my parents one or the other is going to make sure I got my school supplies. They're going to make sure that I've got clothes to wear. They're going to make sure that I've got a bed to sleep in. They're going to make sure I've got shelter. They're going to make sure I'm provided for. Right? So that you have to see the visualization is the children are sort of like mankind, and, the, and then the parents are like the Godhead in that situation. But they're looking up, they're faithful like, until that parent lets them down, then their faith is going to be in that parent. Would you agree? Now, would you also agree that God don't let you down? So there should be never be a reason to drop that faith or understand that God is providing all of what we stand in need for. In fact, it goes to the kingdom of God, Matthew 6, 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen? Any the preceding verses of that in Matthew 6, it's talking about, don't take no thought about what you're going to put on and, and uh, how you're going to be dressed up. He says, uh, Solomon in all his glory, you look at these lilies in the, over here that, that, if you'll let me add live a little bit, that Solomon in all his glory wasn't as beautiful as these. All these flowers, what God's created is, is more beautiful than all the gold and the riches and the garments that Solomon had. So don't get wrapped up in the possession of things, but seek first the kingdom of God. Now God is going to give you, that we know the scripture, it says uh, that, that, that God will supply all of your need according to his riches and glory. He's going to give you what you stand in need of. And we shared this not too long ago, that if we can't be thankful over a bottle of water, why would God give us a case of water? If we can't be thankful over having 15 or 20 people at the church, why would God give us 100 or 150 to fill it up? Mm -hmm. If I can't be thankful and satisfied preaching to one or two, why would God let me pastor 15 or 20? And if I'm faithful over 15 or 20, 
And I'm thankful for that. What's to say he's not going to bring in 15 or 20 more? Mm -hmm. Amen. And I use that as an example because we got to be thankful and realize that one of you, Jesus would leave the 99 and come to find. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. One of you by yourself is just as special as there is for a, a whole church full. Because God loves it. And each one of you needs to hear a word from God. <laughs> you know I love to tell stories. I don't know if I told this story. If I told the story, I'm going to tell it again anyway. So if a farmer comes to his old small church and they had a guest preacher come in. So the farmer was sitting there and the guest preacher pulls up. And he opens up the door. They come in. And it's just the farmer... And the preacher said, they're waiting. He says, well, you think we ought to get started? The farmer said, well, why you ask me? He said, I'm just a farmer. But if all I had was one cow, I'd still have to feed him. Well, that motivated the preacher. The preacher got to preaching, and, and he's preaching hard and going strong. And he looks out, he says, you think we ought to stop? He said, why do you ask me? I'm just a farmer. But if all I had was one cow, <laughs> I wouldn't feed him all that I had. <laughs> so, Lonnie told, told that story. But, but you see that, that uh, but you are special that God wants to give and he, he wants us to be faithful. And for me as the pastor, it's not for me to go see what are greener pastures or what other opportunities. This was an opportunity uh, that I wasn't looking for to start with. But I'm thankful, and we love coming here to Pleasant Grove. We love sharing the word. Amen. And we pray that you guys get as much from us as we get from you. But God is a giving God. God is a providing God. And God has the right church, the right pastor, the right wife, the right husband, the right whatever you need in your life. God has the right one. We don't always hear it the first time. Amen? And it could be that things get changed not because of what we've done, but what others have done. Now, have everybody turned to Luke chapter 12? Mm -hmm. Now I'll read verse 31. Let me just turn to 31. But rather seek you first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Now, I, I quoted Matthew 6, 33. That sort of quotes the same thing about seeking first the kingdom of God. But here in the book of Luke chapter 12, that because you're seeking the kingdom of God, he wants to give you the kingdom. Of his, it's his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He wants to give you that. This, this is sort of a loaded question. Is that if I came up to, uh, let's say Brother Greg did something for me, helped me change my tire, something like that, and I wanted to give him some money, what do you think he would say? No, no thank you. He said, no, I, I know he, I know he would. Amen. But should I offer her anyway? Mm -hmm. I should. I mean, I use that. You probably say, well, you know, he's, He's going to say no, but should you offer? Yeah, you, you, you should offer. I know I should offer. I was raised that way, right? And would it be wrong for him to, to take it if I did offer it? No. no. It wouldn't be wrong. It wouldn't be nothing at all wrong with that. He did me a favor, and I felt like I should bless him and be a reward for him. Mm -hmm. So like when Brother Kenneth came and preached, and, and we tried to give him a love offering, and, and he wouldn't take it. He said, no, I'll give that. Put that back in the church. But since Judy had already wrote a check, he took that part. But remember, I took two off, had a, a cash offering and then the, the regular check that she writes for a guest speaker. But he wouldn't take. And I was insisting, he was insisting on rejecting. I was insisting on giving. Right? But he's insisting on, no, I don't, I, I don't want that. And so we came to a happy medium that he accepted the check because he wasn't going to take anything. So we sort of compromised. So it's not, 
But it's God's good. So it's, I wanted to give it. I wanted to be a blessing to him. Brother Greg would want to be a blessing to me to help me in that situation. The same as many of you wanted to be a blessing, not expecting something in return. If you was doing something to get something in return, you was working. You wasn't being a blessing, right? There's a, so, but God, it's God's good pleasure to give you righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. We've already studied all about the kingdom of God, so I'm not going to break all that scripture down for you. But he says it's God's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Let's look over to John chapter 10. John chapter 10, verse 27. John chapter 10, verse 27. Let me back up to 25 since it's in red. I told you and you believe not the works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you believe not because you are not my sheep and I said as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I give them, excuse me, and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Jesus says, I give. He's the provider of eternal life. We have eternal life because Jesus gives it to us. Mm -hmm. But can we resist it? Mm -hmm. If I wanted to give, you could resist it. Now, let's say I, I give it to him. The blessing because he helped me change my tire and he turned around and gave it back to me. I want to be a blessing back to you. So he could receive it, but then he gave it back to me. When Jesus gives us eternal life, we can choose if we keep it. Now, I'm not trying to get into this losing your salvation. Because if I truly am born again, I truly want to live for the Lord, I'm going to follow what the Word of God tells me. I may make mistakes along the way, but if I make a mistake, I know that I'll hear from God to, to convict me, and I'm going to repent. Mm-hmm. And God gives me that gap insurance that we've talked about. He gives me a grace window. The great thing about God is He knows that if it's going to take me a day or a week, There's a scripture that says there's a sin unto death and there's a sin not unto death. There's a, there's a breaking point. The straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak. So we can get to that point. The preachers, your mom, your dad, we can't tell you what it is, what sin it's going to be, if it's number one, number two, number three, or the fourth, or the hundredth sin that you do, or the millionth sin, but one of those sins is going to be too long and, and too late. Amen? So what the Word of God teaches me is if I, can, if I have sin, confess my sin, and He's faithful to us to forgive me of my sin, He's going to give me that forgiveness. Because He's a giving God. Not because I deserved it, but I had to do something. I had to believe, and I had to confess. I shared this with you before. I do what I do because I'm saved. I'm not saved because I do what I do. Brother Greg, you're not saved because you teach Sunday school. You're not saved because you you go out here and you mow the yard after you've been working all week. Miss Sharon, you're not saved because you play the piano. That you got a sore thumb and, and you still push through. People don't know that you have to use that thumb to play the piano. I know you have to use the thumb to play the piano. You're not saved because you come and clean the church. Because you vacuum the floor to make sure it's presentable for Sundays or for Wednesdays. You're not saved because you give the pastor of uh, filling my cup up. I was using it this week. Uh, about uh, Fill my cup. Miss Patsy gave me a coffee cup. Talking about uh, filling up my cup. You know, because I talk about that. Come in with your cup ready to get it filled up. 
And you're not saved because you, you give the gift. You're not saved because you're faithful to the church. You're not saved. Uh, you're not saved because of uh, uh, the things you do. You do these things because you are saved. The characteristics of God is to, to love, is to give, is to share, and to be faithful. So you start following those characteristics that God has instilled with you. But as soon as you start thinking, I'm, I've got all this because of what I've done. That's when we start making a mistake. That's when it starts saying, where's that dollar I give you? You want to hear another story? Okay, I'll tell you. My wife says, yeah. And then I'm going to close. There's a preacher getting ready to preach a revival. He starts his first night of revival. And he preached. It was a, boy, it was hell of fire and brimstone. People come to the altar, jumping, shouting, wonderful service. He finished the service. He got home and said, boy, that was a good one. I preached tonight. Got to the second night of revival. You... You could heard a pin drop, no participation. It was just dead wood. He goes out there and he's talking to the Lord. Lord, what happened? He said, Well, tonight was you. <laughs> you know, so, so when we think that we're all that, we start realizing if anybody is blessed in this church, if you see anything good in my life, may God get the glory for it in the name of Jesus Christ. If anything is accomplished out of our church here at Pleasant Grove, give God the glory for it. If we're able to play a song all the way through without hitting the wrong note, give God the glory for it. Does he expect us to practice? Sure. Does he expect me to prepare to preach? Sure. Right? I don't always, actually, when it's time for me to preach, I don't always preach what I've got written down. But I have to be prepared. Right? I have to, I have to come up with uh, what what does the Bible say about it? Who can give me who can give me the Bible reference? Not necessarily the, the verse and chapter. What did he tell his disciples? Take no script. He said, but in that hour I'm going to give you what you need to say. So what could a lazy preacher do? <laughs> just stand here and wait well, I'm going to sit here and pull up a 20 year old sermon that I preached about the days of God that wasn't the reason I pulled those out it's good information is what the Lord wanted me to share with the church no but you still prepare and you read and you pray because you don't know what words are going to say what uh, here we got Fifteen. Fifteen, sixteen counting me. I'll have to hear the word of God too. So we can all come in here and you think of each one of us has a little something different that we went through today. Sometimes you can't say and stay on topic in a sermon. Brother Greg, I know you feel that whenever you're teaching Sunday school because uh, when you're a lot of your Sunday schools are like sermons. And some people may not recognize it, but you I know people that study and they actually teach, they realize, well, that's like a sermon because that wasn't part of the lesson plan. Because God feeds us, and he's got all these different people that he has to give us information. So what did we focus on mainly tonight? Is that a trick question? The Lord provides. The Lord provides. He's the giver, right? He's the giver of salvation. What else did he give? Grace. Grace. Health. Health. Wisdom. Endurance. What's that? Endurance. Endurance. Faith. Faith. Grace. Grace. Somebody give me. I think we said grace before. Somebody. Somebody on this side give me something. He was. I want to know somebody else paid attention besides over here. Rice, joy, peace, and joy. Rice, joy, peace, and hope. Rice is peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, honey. What did you say, Gibbs? Patience. Joy. Joy. Now, I want to pause just one second because I like the way, way Brother Junior said that. One thing I never pray for 
is patience. And that's what we need most of, right, sometimes. Why, do, why wouldn't I pray for patience? Do, do, do you know a Bible verse that talks about that? <clears throat> as soon as I quote it, you'll know it. Because I've learned this in order not to pray for patience. The trying of your faith worketh patience. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, who wants to be stronger in the Lord? Mm -hmm. yeah. We was a little reluctant because I just said that. I don't know if I want to say out that or not, right? I already know I don't want to pray for patience because I want my <coughs> life to be nice and smooth. <coughs> right? We all technically want that nice and smooth, right? I work with a, a new guy. We got a new electrical engineer. This bottle is bigger than his arms. Right? He, uh, he's, he's a geek. You know, a computer nerd. No, that wasn't derogatory. That's just what they you call the computer people. Uh, so I wouldn't expect, I wouldn't go get him to help me pick up this this piano, right? And if I need to pick it up, I'd get Greg, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't go get this guy. But Greg is used to picking up heavy things, right? Either working hard, getting that, right? Convert that to your faith. When to be prepared for battle, battle, you have to go through valleys. You have to go through difficult times. It makes you stronger. God's not going to let you go through a battle that you can't be so victorious over. Or victoria. You can't. You know. So to be victorious over or, or through in a way that he gets the honor and glory. So Yes, we'll all face some battles, we'll all face some resistance, we'll all face some things in our life because God wants us to be better and prepared to be victorious. Amen. Let us pray. Y'all ready to pray? It's easy to keep going, but it's, we're going to stop. Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight in Jesus' name to give you thanks, praise, honor, and glory. Lord, so much in the Word of God we can see that you're a providing God. And tonight we're thankful Lord, for, for all, not just being uh, disrespectful to say we, we're thankful for all that you do for us because you've done everything for us, Lord. You've given us the air that we breathe. You've given us electricity. You've given us love. You've given us good experiences. You've let us go through valleys to learn greater things. You've given us the word of God. The greatest gift you've given us was Jesus Christ who died on the cross that is by us believing in him and confessing our sins, we can have the promise of eternal life. And so, Lord, we're thankful for, for even, even if you don't do anything else for us, we're thankful for what you've done for us and you've given us that promise of eternal life. Lord, I pray for a protecting boundary around all these that are under uh, our watch tonight that may be watching on social media. Lord, I pray for your protection to be upon them because we know that the enemy is like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. He wants to keep, seek, kill, and destroy everything that God is doing in our life. But tonight, <coughs> we've learned that our God is a providing God and provides everything that we stand in need of. Whatever we need, you are the I am of I am. You are the I am of whatever we stand in need of, that you're there for us, Lord. Lord, if I need, Lord, comfort you're my comforter. Lord, if I need guidance, you're my pastor. You're my good shepherd. Lord, if I need salvation, you're my savior. Lord, if I need healing, you are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals me. Lord, if I need something, finances, Lord God, you're going to supply all of my need. If I need groceries, you're going to supply all of my need. If I need a place to live, you're the provider. You're going to supply whatever I stand in need of. But then all I have to do, Lord, I know in the word is to seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And then we see tonight that it's your good pleasure that you find pleasure to give us the kingdom. And so, Lord, we thank you for the people that can make it tonight. May they be able to receive part of what we was able to minister. And, Father God, that each one of us can count it all joy 
Lord God, to, to say, Lord, I was glad when we came to the house of the Lord tonight. May you let your grace go before us, keep each one of us safe and protected from all hurt, harm, and danger. May the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, be on our doorpost. May the blood of Jesus be on our doorpost, that when the enemy comes to pass by, that he will see the blood of Jesus, and the death angel has to pass by. But may there only be righteousness, peace, and joy dwelling in our homes, and help us to seek first always the kingdom of God in our life, and put you first in all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You can stop that, honey. And I want to remind you.